Hi everyone, I'm filming this video on a Friday and it's a rainy Friday and it actually feels quite nice to have a little bit of rain and feel cozy and warm um, indoors. So what I wanted to do today is share uh, what I'm thinking is an exciting um, news and the news being is that a few days um, ago the Daniel Smith has released a new palette, a new watercolor palette, which has 10 colors and those 10 colors were picked by Jean Haynes. Now, I just had a quick look um, in my book library and I actually don't think I own a, a single book from her, which is uh, strange considering how many watercolor books and art books I already have. But anyway, so I have to look into that. So what was interesting, after I have seen the reveal, I then went and looked into my collection because I thought I already had quite a few colors from, from that set. So that was great because it means, uh, you know, I wouldn't need to go and spend money to buy the set I already had some colors and so maybe you're in the same position and maybe you already have quite a few of her colors if you're attracted to a similar color scheme as she is and it seems to be the case for me so um I already had let me just pull these down that I already had so I had these colors so I only had to purchase three um, so what I did have already is the Nickel Asia Yellow, the Green Appetite Genuine, Opera Pink, Moon Glow, Quinacridone Magenta and Luna Blue. So that was great for me. Um, if you count these cards you actually realize they're 9, not 10. And the reason is I left a little gap between these two which is the Undersea Green and Luna Blue. Um, there is supposed to be one color here which is called Imperial purple so it's this color right here i'm not fond of purples in general and there's only a specific kind of shade of purples that i like and i didn't want to buy a tube of it just to have it for the sake um but i will come back to that in a minute so the three colors that i did purchase to uh, finalize the palette is the cascade green which i don't think i have heard that much about but when she painted with it it looks so gorgeous I thought I had to have it um Ozzy red gold now this is a color I have heard quite a few things about it and I actually had it on my wish list so I decided to get a big um big tube of it the final color I got is the undersea green also I have seen this color so many times uh, talked about by other watercolorists and I never kind of um, got it so I decided it was the right time to do it so there we go so these are the colors here I have arranged them in uh, in the order that she is watching them in that Daniel Smith video I will link it down below so you can have a look purple yes so I wanted to talk to you about the purple let me get the swatch card out and sorry this is the not the swatch card this is the dot card and it's the 238 color very very useful to have when you are picking new colors for your palette so here is the purple that she has picked for her uh, palette and um, here are the purples that I would be attracted to. They're on the next page. So this is the Cobalt Blue Violet, probably one of my favorite purples ever. It uh, breaks into two colors really, really beautifully. And the other one is the Carbazol Violet, a very kind of inky, deep um, purple. So I love that one. And... If I had to pick one purple from this list, I probably would go with the Cobalt Violet Deep because it's a little bit unique and that cobaltness of it uh, provides great source for granulation. So, yeah, that's the, you know, that's my personal thought of it. There's nothing wrong with the color. It's um, probably beautiful to people who love purples, but just not to me. And that's why I decided to skip it. But I did want you to see... The color i'll give you a nice close-up here of the imperial purple 
so that you know what is the purple that she has included in her palette okay so let's go back now to these colors so i'm going to swatch them out and i am um, also going to just do random kind of mixing of the colors really quick and see what we get i'm going to use uh this paper which is the b paper watercolor paper the 300 gsm cold pressed oh this color is escaping a lot so i'm just going to try and wipe it if you don't wipe your tubes what will happen is that they will kind of dry to the cap and then you will get loads of like broken up pieces of dry watercolor and i am now looking for my palette knife to scoop out all of this beautiful watercolor so don't want to waste any of it i mean it's a very unique color palette that uh, jean haynes has picked and i think it reflects her style of watercolor very well because these colors are bright i like that in watercolor a lot however she has also picked some colors which you'll you would probably not find that vibrant at all um, like the undersea green is a very muted color moon glow is a muted color but what you will see that there is a granulation and nice pigment separation in some of these colors so this is what adds that beautiful dimension to watercolors which i want to make a video about soon and talk to you about um how to make watercolor interesting okay i'm just going to go ahead and squeeze all of these out and then we will start the swatching okay so i'm going to pick the jackson's raven 3-0 brush this is the size that i consider kind of um, big enough for me I would never go to a larger brush because of the size of uh, the illustrations that I work with um, however Jean Haynes likes to use large brushes around the 12 I think is her favorite size and she also likes them to be sable so they're nice and soft and um, hold a lot of um, moisture and water in them so this one holds loads as well but this is a synthetic version um, of a, like a squirrel mop type of a brush so um, I'm going to mimic that in the sense that um, when Jean Haynes paints she likes to use a lot of water because um, you know of her style so and I think this is the best way to see how the watercolor behaves if we're going to mimic uh, what she does. So let's start with the Cascade Green over here. And I'm just going to move it out. And I have no idea how I missed out on this color because it is stunning. There is this turquoise-ness to it that I have not... Um, kind of seen before it's a very unique color and your eye just gets so intrigued by what is happening you just can't stop staring at the color because first when you look at it it's a very dull kind of muted green almost like a soldier's green um, but when you add the water and you make this color come alive it's just the most stunning ever um, turquoise green type of a color so what i'm seeing here is a lovely pigment separation into some sort of browns and greens and very bright blues so it's really really pretty and i can see why jane picked it and this is another thing why it's so helpful to see what kind of colors artists use in their palettes because sometimes we can pick up on something that we haven't thought of or seen before and we can introduce that to our own style and in a way improve it also i'm trying to mimic the swatches that she does usually i do a smaller swatch but jane 
uh, does these swatches where she calls them the dancing ladies and um, she lets the color just go into uh, into the water so in fact she first uh, wets the areas and then she lets it go in there but I just like the I'm just going to do it wet on dry rather than wet into wet because I want to just have that long kind of swatch so this one was the nickel Asia yellow next one is the green appetite genuine and you can see a similarity of the behavior uh, to the cascade green Mind you, what series is this one? This one is a series one. I'm very surprised that it's only series one, which means it's not on top of the range, like it's not that expensive, but it looks like a very expensive color. Um, so, but this one is a genuine, however, it's, uh, so it's going to be quite expensive compared to the series one. So all the genuine colors, they're made from the real, um, stones or rocks and this one separates into browns and bright greens so it's really interesting now this orange I'm so excited so I have seen this orange before I find it really fascinating and it's this kind of like a neutral bright orange that I have been um trying to find to add to my palette and like I said I did consider it before it's just that once you swatch it you can't really know for sure but having seen them um uh, in that video from from Jean I kind of could could see the brightness so I thought yes I have to add it now this is opera pink it's a color I hardly ever use it's incredibly loud as you can see it's like a siren so it's um very uh, unrealistic in terms of naturalness it's not natural at all it's very bright very kind of neon so it's great however for um, mixing as I found out and we'll try this in a bit next one moon glow so this is another interesting one this one does very similar thing that these two do so it separates so you can see she very cleverly has put together these colors actually the separation starts once you dab some water into this um, so she really cleverly picked these colors in such a way that you could get a lot more colors by mixing them with colors that separate uh, as it's not just uh, one flat color, but it has a dimension to it. So you could, when mixing with other colors, create these interesting dimensions. So this is a very bright color and actually I haven't used it in a long time. And I'm happy that um, she reminded me of this color from uh, what I already had. So I'll definitely start using it a little bit more often. This is the Quinacridone Magenta. The next one is Undersea Green. Now this is a color that I really have to play around with because I have seen people use it so many times and there is something quite unique about it. I think the way you can mix it and I, yeah, I'm, I'm interested in this one a lot because I use greens on a frequent basis for my floral illustrations. So I do need interesting greens in there. And Luna Blue, now that's a color I had for a while as well. And it also has that interesting property of mixing into, like separating into different, um, into different pigments. So similar thing, I just need to add a bit of water here and there. And I think it separates into blues and grays as you can start seeing over here so i'm going to dry these a little bit come back with fresh clean water uh, because you don't want to start mixing colors with a water that looks like this and then we'll play around and see what we can mix because um jean um mentioned in her video that she likes to use the opera pink with yellow ochre i'm going to use one from my collection 
uh, to create some lovely skin tones. Now that's also really interesting to play around with so we will do that in a bit. Oh this color is starting to look really gorgeous, the undersea green. There is some sort of dimension to it that makes it glow within, like I can see slight separation. Let me quickly have a look. I bet it's going to be two pigments. Oh, it's actually three pigments. Anyways, I'll write all these out and then we'll come back and help. Okay, so when the colors dry, this is when you really get to see um, what they look like once they properly have settled into the paper. And you can see now on Luna Blue how beautiful it looks with the sort of grayish kind of blue pigment separation. The undersea green is also very stunning. And Moon Glow. And Green Appetite Genuine. And then finally the Cascade Green very beautiful so um, I had a good look at the pigments and I wanted to quickly go through them I'm not going to go through all of the info of the colors because otherwise this video would be super super long um, but what I do want to look at is the series so I want to uh, show you how expensive those colors where that Jean has picked for these uh, for this set and also the pigments and it will be a little bit more clear once I uh, sort of explain a few things perhaps so um, in the cascade green we have two pigments and uh, they are pigment brown 7 and pigment blue 15 it's a series 1 um, then I'll just quickly tell you how many single pigments there are and we're looking at nickel azer yellow which is the 150 so pigment yellow then we have opera pink which is a pigment red 122 and the final single pigment is um, I'm, I actually I'm not going to include imperial purple when I'm talking about pigments because I haven't looked at it um, so the final one is the quinacridone magenta pigment red 202. So the only series one that you have in this set is the cascade green, opera pink and undersea green, which I'm a little bit surprised about, especially these two, because they are beautiful, beautiful colors and they seem very complex in the mixing of the um, pigments but yeah they're, they're only series one so uh, let's continue with the others uh, green appetite genuine obviously doesn't have a pigment information because it's made not from a pigment but from a real rock and it's a series three as we have mentioned before so it's going to be quite pricey and in fact it's the uh, most expensive um, color from this set and uh, next one we have is a three pigment mix and in fact there are three colors which have three pigments in them which is usually considered a lot uh, when there are that many pigments mixed so um, in these two cases so in the case of undersea green and moon glow you kind of almost can see those three colors because they have been designed in such a way that they separate and you can see through um, however in the case of Aussie red gold there isn't that pigment separation it's just a very beautiful very glowy warm and neutral um orange and it is actually quite hard to find a orange that is bright however it's looking natural like it's a, a color that is not um, looking out of place if I would paint a, a flower with it it wouldn't look too unnatural so the pigments that went into creating this color is uh, pigment yellow 83 pigment red 101 and PV which is a pigment violet 19 and this is a quinacridone red and uh, it's uh, it's interesting to me that 
these colors have been used to create it and perhaps that's what gives it that beautiful glow we have already talked about this color uh, which is opera pink so let's move on to moon glow which is the next color on the list and it is the pigment green 18 pigment blue 29 and pigment red uh, 177 now i can see blue and i can see like a purpley grayish purple kind of color and i can see a little bit of pinky color in here i cannot see uh, a green so it's interesting that um, the the pigments react and behave the way they do. Then we have already talked about Conacridon Magenta. And the next color is Undersea Green, which is the also a three pigment mix. So we have Pigment Blue 29, Pigment Orange 48 and Pigment Yellow 150. Now... Um, I can see blue, I can see green, and I can see yellow. Um, but there is also an orange here, so that's also interesting to see how this has been created. You can see this kind of almost like a glow um, of the color, and that is created by, I guess, the pigment yellow which actually is the um, the same pigment as we have here. So this is the single pigment, PY150, and Nicolaser Yellow has that beautiful glow to it. So when you add this color to any of the other color, and I agree with that when you add this color to all of the other colors, it makes them glow. It really is quite uh, accurate description of this color because it does do that and it's very strong also it also kind of moves other colors very strongly to the side once it uh, takes the center stage so yeah it's interesting to see that this color is also coming through quite nicely in in this uh, undersea green so then we have the final color to talk about and it is a lunar blue very interesting uh, two pigments mix it's a pigment blue 15 and pigment black 11 so yes i can see the grays and the blues here really beautifully so uh, across the board we have um, three colors which are series one and we have one color which is series three and the rest are all series two so they are interesting colors for sure and now i would like to get to mix these colors a little bit and play around with them and also like i said i do want to uh, try and mix the opera pink with uh, yellow ochre for that skin tone so which i'll do right at the end so let's have a little play around i'm going to push these colors up here so we have loads of space to play around on this paper